Take notes, mangaka. This is how you start a new volume. So, you want to know how to end a volume. You end it with a bone chilling cliffhanger. You want to know how to start a new volume. Well, how about this? Begin with intensity of hype and satisfaction. This chapter no doubt delivers it. Howard never ceased to amaze me with his outstanding action sequence that had me out of my seat. This is Vintage Kingdom. The chapter begins right where we left off. No stalling time with a meanwhile segment. We get straight to the answer. My bet was on someone would save Alko on time before the slash. Otherwise, he's good as dead. Never would I thought that the one who will save him would be himself. That was seriously shocking. I reacted like that panel right after Gyo-on blocked the attack. Simply shocked. I know many fans didn't want to invest his character because of Mako, leaving an impression that both Olsen's commanders will fall flat. Thankfully, intentional or not, Hara pulled a fast one and have Akko not only to live longer, but pull a hell of a fight against two generals no less. Akko is a real deal, never doubted his excellence. I'm so glad that I put my investment. At this time, I was still worried as hell because despite of locking and striking back, he's still in the danger zone. It capitalized the deep tension of Akko's life in jeopardy. I was starting to feel bad for his army, which is also capitalized for sympathy. All Akko needs is another person to assist. Yet Zhao army blocks them and let them see their beloved master getting wrecked, suffering for all their worth. You can argue it's cowardly, but the fact is, it's battle smarts. It was only a matter of when will he die as long as no one comes to help. I made a mistake on thinking Ohan arriving to the scene, saving Akko in the process. That scene is actually taking place back at where Shin and Gakue are about to have a duel. I guess I was desperate, so my fault for reading it wrong. With that said, it does lead to a profound moment that is doing a hell of a job to convince me to put Ohan in my top 5 favorites. Hara continues to draw my feel of sympathy when a man from Alko Army arrives to Gyokoho unit with an urgent report. Now I just feel sorry for them, closing in to lose their master. We know how Mako Army reacted when theirs died. We don't need another one. The unit knows that Alko is in danger and Gunen is dead. I don't know what's in store for Banyo reacting to the news. But if Akko survives and reflect on his passing, I would bet he will have Zhao's generals for breakfast. It leaves the unit on a very precious state on what to do next. They're ordered to stand by with Hishin unit to slay Gakue, so they didn't think so much of other option. Even so, Kanjo feels that they may not have any time left to save him from where they stand. After seeing the guy pleading for help, I will hate to see him getting turned down. From this point, this segues to a noteworthy moment of Ohan. This guy just keeps on growing. This arc so far has been filling in his book of greatness more so than his earlier accomplishment. Yes, he does have Earl Shi Slayer title under his wing, but never before he has developed to a bona fide, mature, great general candidate at this magnitude. He knows his priority very well that he didn't hesitate to accept the offer. He only took a small time to think on how should he handle it. Gone with the selfish thought of losing an opportunity to make a name for slaying a general. Speaking of selfish, the most evident yet shocking development of Ohan comes after his men question him about their plan to slay a general. I would like to think the translation made a huge error, but it's all true. Ohan is actually going to let Shen to get the kill. This is seriously huge for his character. His men reacted like they believe the end is near. Maybe this Ohan is a fake. I believe back then, Ohan would have been upset as hell if he was pleaded to save someone that would avoid his moment to shine alas the kill. Granted, he may still do the right thing, but his mood will be visible. Not to mention, if Shin takes it, 
that will make it worse. Not only he knows his priority and importance, but he subtly believes in Shin to get the win. That's actually kind of him. I would bet he would deny it when Shin learns about it. While all of that is nice and all of Ohan, what did it for me is his sincere thoughts of Akko before heading off. He's not only becoming wiser in the battlefield, but he's also becoming a gentleman. His thoughts doesn't express a tone that strikes him as a guy who is going to save him because of a mission. He expressed a guy who wants to save him out of respect. Even if he does fail, he promised to go there to retrieve his body. That is so admirable. Now I really want Akko to live. Olsen, you got to show your son a fatherly love. He earned it. I thought Hara would toy around with the fans and force them to wait longer to see what happens next. Instead, the chapter shifts back to Akko against Gyoon and Bananji. And holy crap! Talk about enticing and jarring action. The imagery of Akko taking on two generals with a lot of hype behind them is surreal. No one expects him to win, but hardly anyone expects him to keep up. The action sequence is so riveting. I can't follow the sequence very well despite with crazy amount of blocks and strikes from all fronts. All of them look incredible with their sheer performance. No one was downplayed. Each time I look at the next panel, my fear increases and turning to the next page grows difficult. So many moments. I thought Akko got his limb cut off, but he blocks them right on time. The impact is intense. The fact Akko gets beaten down yet still got a hit is impressive. He was so close on killing Bonanji with that one swing that destroyed his helmet. Bonanji is a madman that just laughed with a new scar. The next page was terrifying. It's basically a trade-off, only he did it worse. It was the perfect setup for the end. Ohan's word made sure that the end game can go two ways, so it's not predictable to believe Akko will live. If anything, I was convinced this was it, with Ohan coming late. Either way, Akko did well. One panel confused me to think. Gyoon delivered a kill, but it was someone else. Like someone decided to insert a quarter in an arcade machine without notice. Akko can, out of nowhere, arise with his permanent smile and shoot shards from his hand at Gyoon. A great distraction to force him to block. But Naji say, screw it, I'll get the kill. And around this time, I was out of my seat. No joke. My laptop screwed me over because it wasn't completely full screen, so I didn't know what just happened. I fixed the view and praised the sun. Akka can freaking save Akko from a close death. That double page spread is breathtaking. I marked the hell out with that amazing rescue. It's pure gratifying. Akka can is still new. Yeah, he's already glorious. This is vintage horror in writing. I love how it ends with him being goofy while stating the realistic view. That's how you end it strong. When it comes to the presentation, it relies on the atmosphere and magnitude of the scenario. Kingdom is well known on delivering the intensity of a battle, so this is no exception. I was glued on the intense combat Nothing else was registering in my head. The artwork is great as well with 10 sequences that got me off of my seat. The rescue never felt so incredible. Akka King cannot die at all costs. He's amazing. This chapter is full of shocking moments. If it can literally shock, I will be dead. For a first chapter of the volume, let alone a standalone, it was outstanding. Akko was more than impressive to keep it up. Ohan continues to develop and show great signs of change in him. The battle was intense. Akka can seen to the rescue was glorious. The follow up has to be one as well. It won't be long now before Shin delivers. If the quality is like this going forward, well, we are in for an amazing ride.
And that would do it for the review. I hope you enjoy this one. That's an amazing start for a volume. Could you imagine picking up the new volume right after that cliffhanger? You're going to be like, oh my god, what an intense moment. You will be so floored by the intensity. It's that good. Now I can only pray that the quality like this will be similar throughout the entire volume. Could you imagine? What do you think of the chapter? Share your thoughts in the comment section. If you like this and want more of this, subscribe to my channel and my world will be yours to stay. Until next time, take care.